Fun fact, I actually got asked to no longer take the little mayonnaise packets from the deli section at Target uh, because I would just go in there and just eat mayonnaise. Okay. Now, this was before I knew any better that commercial mayonnaise was full of soybean oil, but my point here is that nine, 10 years ago when I was starting the ketogenic diet, I was eating lots of mayonnaise. I really was, and I've lost you know, 100 pounds eating lots of mayonnaise. Now, of course, I know better and I know the kinds of mayonnaise to eat, but my point in doing this video is to say that I still eat mayonnaise just about every single day, and I strongly consider mayonnaise a health food. What's funny is that when you look at the purchase habits of millennials, millennials are buying twice as much mayonnaise as older populations. It's kind of funny because what that tells us is that the millennials see that fats are not bad, right? But the older populations are kind of stuck in the way of, hey, fats are still bad, so they don't buy mayonnaise. It's kind of funny, okay, right? So you have twice as much mayonnaise being bought by younger populations. Now, the Arimark Group has estimated that mayonnaise is going to be at a value of $13.2 billion by 2024, okay? That's a 4.1% increase from 2019 to 2024 people are on the mayonnaise train. And we have to get rid of the stigma that mayonnaise is bad. Mayonnaise is bad if you're consuming a lot of the soybean oil mayonnaise and the low quality mayonnaise that's out there. But mayonnaise is just a few simple ingredients. And I'm gonna break them down really simply. Okay, we got egg yolks, we've got oil, which largely should be avocado or olive oil. We've got vinegar and we've got some lemon and maybe some other spices, salt, whatever you wanna put in there. So I'll break it down really simply as to why mayonnaise is such a health food. I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications too. All right, egg yolks. The first thing, egg yolks are great because we're not utilizing the part of the egg that is potentially inflammatory. Here's my issue with eggs usually. The white is great because it's high in protein, but the hard part is the white just carries a lot of the immunoglobulins and the sort of antibody effect for the growing chicken. Should those antibodies and should those immunoglobulins be transferred into us as humans? That's questionable. And that's why sometimes people have an inflammatory reaction with eggs. It's not because of the yolk, it's usually because of the white. So when we're taking the best part of the egg, just the straight up yolk, then heck yeah, we're getting the good fats without all the potential negative side effects. But we're also getting the biotin and we're also getting the choline, which I'm a big fan of. So choline is a precursor to acetylcholine. So it reacts with acetylcholenzyme A, which therefore ultimately creates acetylcholine. Now acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that prompts synaptogenesis within the brain, which is a simple way of saying, Basically, it helps the brain communicate, helps cells communicate. But there are a lot of studies that show that when people are deficient in acetylcholine, they don't make the same connection with their brain and their muscles and they don't perform as well. So for me, being an athlete, I really like it. I really like feeling like my brain is connected with my body quite a bit more. Now, of course, we also have to look at the equation with vitamin D, okay? We can go on and on and on and on and talk about vitamin D, but I think the biggest piece here is the immune system. You see, our T cells, which have an effect within the immune system, of course, they are our immune system, have vitamin D receptors on them and when they notice a threat within the body they send out a signal to vitamin D and if there's no vitamin D on hand they don't actually attack the foreign invader so they send out this signal arm to vitamin D vitamin D activates the T cell and then it neutralizes the threat so basically it leaves our body well potentially victim to all kinds of threats that are coming in okay, then we look at selenium and I know I'm rattling on and on and on about egg yolks you're probably getting bored but selenium is cool stuff all right, selenium is very critical for glutathione. In fact, glutathione is 100% dependent on selenium to actually become functional within the body. Glutathione is our body's inherent master antioxidant. It is our body's built-in ability to neutralize oxidative threats, okay? So we need it straight up. It's a powerful antioxidant and it does not get activated unless we have selenium. And quite frankly, you're probably not getting a lot of selenium in the diet if you're doing a keto diet and you're not eating your veggies, you're not eating your Brazil nuts. So anyway, it's just something to note. And now the fun one that we really need to talk about. Olive oil, avocado oil should be the oil within your mayo. If it's soybean oil or anything like that, I do not recommend that you go for it. But there's a lot of olive oil and avocado oil mayonnaises that are out there now, okay? Like uh, Primal Kitchen, all kinds of these Whole Foods brands. There's a lot of different ones. Okay, here's the thing. Healthy monounsaturated fat that sure is linked to higher HDL levels, lower LDL cholesterol levels, that's all great. But the big cool benefit that I wanna talk about is the oleic acid that's in it. Oleic acid converts into something very cool within the body via an enzymatic pathway. It converts into something known as oleolethanolamine. Okay, now oleolethanolamine activates what is called PPAR. Now this is all just jargon and I'm not trying to just sound smart, I'm just paraphrasing here. Basically, what it does is it activates uncoupling proteins in the body that dissipate calories as body heat. 
So uncoupling proteins take calories that you take in and dissipate them as heat. So literally could be helping you get your core body temperature up, which could inadvertently help you burn more fat. Clearly a good thing, not a bad thing. But additionally, if you've ever had olive oil or avocado, you know that you feel very calm afterwards if you actually are in tune with your body. And there's a strong reason for that. Because the oleic acid and the oleo and ethylamine bind to what are called TRPV1 receptors, which therefore release oxytocin, which is known as the cuddle hormone. If you've ever hugged someone and you know that feeling of just relaxation you get, that's oxytocin. And oxytocin has a cortisol blunting effect, which means it helps calm you down. So really cool stuff. By the way, if you want to try some of these really good healthy mayonnaises, I did put a link below down to Thrive Market. Okay, Thrive Market has all kinds of different mayonnaise that you can try. And I've created keto and fasting bundles. So if you're doing a low carb diet, I have a specific grocery bundle where I put my groceries together in a given box. And that makes it really easy for people that watch my videos to hop on over to Thrive and try the things that Thomas DeLauer would recommend. So they help this channel out a lot. They provide my viewers and provide my audience with all kinds of great deals. So I do wanna make sure that you check them out down below in the description if you wanna try some of these cool mayonnaises that I'm talking about. So after you watch the rest of this video though. Okay, additionally, we need to talk about acetic acid for a second. Now, there's not a lot of vinegar in mayonnaise, but my point in doing this video is to break down one by one what mayonnaise actually is. And I want you to be able to tell me, okay, based on what I'm telling you, does this really look like a bad food? Is mayonnaise really unhealthy? Because when you actually break it down ingredient by ingredient by ingredient individually, these things are pretty darn good for you. So vinegar, largely acetic acid, is very good at helping our energy sensors within the body, known as AMPK. AMPK is the energy sensor. So when we are devoid of calories and we don't have good energy coming in, AMPK elevates in the liver and the muscles and things like that to say, uh-oh, we don't have enough fuel coming in, so we need to make sure that we're utilizing fuel from our body instead of fuel that's not coming in, right? So this is a really powerful mechanism within the body but we need certain foods to help upregulate AMPK. And it just so happens that AMPK gets activated or elevated by acetic acid, which means that it helps the energy sensors within our body. So if you're doing keto and you're trying to encourage your body to burn its own stores of fat, vinegar might be a really powerful way to do that. But in addition to that, it downregulates AMPK within the brain. So if AMPK is upregulated within the brain, if it's advanced in the brain, it actually makes us hungry. But if it's suppressed in the brain and elevated in the liver, it makes us satiated at the brain level, but hungry at the body level. That's exactly what we want, right? We want our body to be hungry so it's eating its own fat, but we want our brain to be perfectly satisfied. That's the benefit of vinegar, and that's why I'm always talking about apple cider vinegar, this and that, and yada yada, going on and on and on. So when you break down all these ingredients, you've got some pretty good stuff, and that, my friends, is why I get kicked out of Target when I go to the deli section and steal a pack of the mayonnaise. So continue to eat your mayonnaise. It is a health food, and for once, I think the millennials have it right. All right, I will see you in the next video, and thank you very much for watching.